So a few weeks back, I made a video about a sound design plugin that a lot of people seem to find interesting. And that's why in this one, we're talking about another piece of software that might help you with the process of doing sound design for your videos. It's called SoundQ and it's by prosoundeffects.com. This video isn't sponsored or anything. I just thought that this thing was cool and I wanted to show it off because I think that a lot of people might find it useful. And it's got a bunch of cool features that we're gonna talk about, but there's one in particular that pretty much makes using this software worth it on its own. So first of all, I should probably try to explain what SoundQ actually is, and it's essentially a database manager for your sound effects. And that basically means that it's a tool that helps you to keep your sound effects organized and it makes it easier to find what you need. There are a few other ones like this, but SoundQ has one specific feature that stands out and we'll talk about that in a second. The way it works is pretty simple. It lets you search for different sound effects either based on their name or a few other tags and categories. It's all based on different sound effects libraries and when you install it for free, it comes with a few of them, but we'll talk about that in a bit. It's also important to mention that these sound libraries are cloud-based and that pretty much means that you do have to have an internet connection while you're using this. Now, it might sound a little inconvenient, but when you look at how many files there are in some of the libraries that you can buy, you're gonna realize that all of them being cloud-based saves a lot of space on your computer. And it automatically downloads only the ones that you actually end up using, and for the ones that you don't, you can just preview them without having to use up any space. That being said, you're also able to work from local libraries that you've already got on your machine. The reason that's cool is if you've already got your own sound effect library that you've built out, you can go ahead and import it into SoundQ and use it in there. The way you probably want to do this is by first creating a new collection for them by clicking the plus button next to system collections and then giving it a name. Then you can either go to this icon at the top and then hit browse to find your sound effects and choose for them to go in the collection that you just made, or you can just straight up drag and drop the folder that you have them in right into SoundQ. You should keep in mind that unfortunately, if you have your sound effects folder organized really well with like a bunch of subfolders, when you import it into the software, those subfolders won't be there anymore. All of the files are just like gonna be in one main collection together. And that is something that can be a bit annoying, especially if you've got a ton of files that you've already organized, but maybe they'll make it so the folder structure is also imported down the line. Until then, you are able to add secondary collections into the main one like you would with folders, and then you can start organizing your sound effects into those. It can be a pain in the ass, but something that could make it a little easier is if you hit this little bullseye icon next to any collection, you can set it as a target. And that essentially lets you select a bunch of files together by holding down control and clicking on them and then if you hit t it's going to put them in the target folder then you can just set different subfolders as a target for the different sound effects that you want to group together it still takes time to set up but at least this way things should go a little bit quicker or if you don't want to deal with any of that i guess you could just let it be complete chaos in here but i'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. Anyways, now we can talk about some of the really cool features that SoundQ has. One of which is that you can directly drag and drop any sound effect into whatever editing software you're using. To set it up, you go to the menu at the bottom here and then select drag and drop. You also have a few options where you can set it up to send files directly into your timeline for a few programs, but since Resolve isn't on here, drag and drop is the next best thing for me. You can choose the sample rate and the bit depth for the files that you're using, but I usually just leave these as original. And Transfer Path lets you decide where the files themselves are going to be downloaded to from the cloud. I personally prefer setting this to a custom folder. The drag and drop thing on its own is pretty cool, but there are also a few other really useful features. For starters, you can choose to have the sound effect be in reverse by clicking this little arrow icon. And it's not just for the playback in the software, if you drag it into your timeline when this is on, you're gonna get the reverse sound effect in there as well. You've also got the option to control the volume, and again, this applies when you drag it over. You can control the speed of the sound effect, which also controls the pitch, and that's something that most people will find themselves doing a lot of the time. And you can reset these by double-clicking the dot. Another really cool thing is that if you only need part of a sound effect, you can hold down the left click and drag to select in and out points for the section that you want to use. You can even add crossfades to the start and the end of it. 
Just gotta keep in mind that if you do it this way with the in and out points, when you drop it in the timeline, you can't extend it back to the full length, only make it shorter. So just try to use this feature on sound effects that you know for sure you only need part of. So even though those are really cool features, there's one more that I mentioned at the start of the video that's especially useful. Like I said earlier, SoundQ works with a bunch of sound effect libraries. Right after you install it, you get access to a few of them for free, and there are also ones that you can buy if you need them. Now, one of those free libraries that you get access to right away is the one from freesound.org. So the fact that you have access to that for free directly after installing SoundQ means that even if you don't have a budget to spend on any other platforms that offer sound effects, you're still able to start building your very own custom library by using what's available on Freesound. You can obviously just do that by going on the site itself and searching for what you need, which is fine, but if you want to use any of the other features I talked about, there's no reason not to just do it all in here. Only drawback I can think of when it comes to using the free sound library is that a lot of the sound effects aren't nearly as well organized as they would be on like a platform like Epidemic or Artlist. Some of them have really generic names that don't give you a good enough idea of what it actually is, so it can take a little trial and error before you find something that works. That said, if you're not afraid of spending a bit of time beforehand setting things up in here, I definitely think that including this software into your workflow has the potential to save you a lot of time. So yeah, like I said, this video isn't sponsored or anything. I just found this software recently and after messing with it for a bit, I have the feeling that it could end up being useful for a lot of people. So I wanted to share about it since I haven't really seen any other videos talking about it. Either way, I can't promise that it's something that you'll find a place for in your workflow, but I'm definitely gonna give it a fair shot and see how it works down the line. I'll have a link to where you can get it in the description and it's free, so if it sounds like something that's interesting to you, you can go ahead and check it out, see how it works, and if you do, let me know what you think in the comments. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.